All right. So I did this Wolverine traditionally, uh, 11 by 17. And I'm gonna go through now and try to finish off the coloring. I did all of these parts here with uh, coffee. And then I used red paint with a little bit of brown in it to make it look more like blood. Blood spatter, blood spray. So I'm going to have to go through here and use the lasso tool and grab all this stuff anyways. Oops. So the scan on this actually turned out blurry in some areas and really clear and crisp in other areas and it's just, I scanned it so many times and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, for whatever reason, something I did on this just does not like the scanner and I'm thinking it is the metallic paint that I used for his claws. You can see right here, these are the silver ones. But then again, in areas where there is no paint, you still have blur. Like over here, there is no silver paint in this whole area. And you still have blur. So what we're thinking happened is the light from the scanner was bouncing off of the silver paint on these three blades and this partial and was bouncing back through the whole image as it was trying to scan. So I won't be doing that again. That was quite annoying trying to nail down this scan. But now I'm going to try to use that actually and uh, play off of it as, as if the image is moving a little bit. You know, like it was hard to take a photo of Wolverine and, and nail him down during this Berserker Rage kind of thing. That he's got going on here. So I'm basically just trying to lasso him here. I think that I have got to say, stop saying, basically. So yeah, I'm trying to lasso him here and get this selection done so that I can color him and finish him off. I'm almost sort of glad I didn't finish painting the rest of the claws because if I did, who knows how bad this would have been as a scam. And I might have to go in and redo it or whatever and fix some stuff. But I'm hoping that what I can do is use the program Clip Studio Paint here to turn this around and make it make the blur not such a big deal. So 
so because I have so much of it uh, colored already I am just getting a hang handle on my colors and I'm honestly struggling with it because I'm not the greatest at it yet or just in general period so yeah so I decided to fight through it and see if maybe I can learn something along the way because you know how you learn a little bit through each piece you do so I figured you know what there's probably gonna be a lot of people in my shoes why not try to help each other all out this was done on an Epson scanner and at first I was thinking man have I ever scanned anything with this 11 by 17 flatbed scanner on it and then I realized yes I did I scanned a uh, inked or a penciled spawn piece, 11 by 17 spawn piece that I did, and it came out great. So I really think it is the paints that were having a pro that a uh, negative effect on this whole thing. Okay, so here we go. I think I'll leave it at that. I'm on a different layer. <laughs> Excuse me. So I am going to fill this in. Let me see, my base color is going to be brown, but do I want to use that? Oops. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I actually want to use that as my base color or not. I think I probably should because I can enrich the browns a little bit. Let's see if what it's doing to the black lines here. Not too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that that this will be my selection so if I while I'm working on something else I'll just turn this this one off that I locked and then uh, use this one to select from select the areas or whatever that I want so these will basically be my flats actually so I don't really have to lower the gradient on that I can just leave it as is right now because I'm not done all the colors aren't really on there yet all right, oops, I didn't need to do that. So now I can take that selection and I can go through and I can cut out what I don't need on there. So let me see, brown all of the back. I usually, I wanna work biggest area down to the smaller areas. See, this is the kind of stuff that I'm trying to get a hang on. Because before I'm like, oh yeah, I got this down. I'll just do the the face mask and this now blah blah. And then I totally forgot the hair. Because you know, the hair is going to be in the back, the mask is going to be in the front, and then the skin, and then the eyes. And you have to sort of think in a layered format coming forward like that, and then the claws. So let me see. I should probably do the hair next. So what I'll do is I'll take and cut off everything that isn't there. And the reason that uh, other people do it this way that they've said is because if you do that, then you will have already selected all of your major outline stuff. Whoops, I shouldn't have done that, whatever. I'll just do that real quick. There we go. Yeah, then I can come through here and do these. But yeah, the reason that you do that, they said, the other things that I've learned from is because you don't want to have 
overlapping lines that you're that you're drawing over twice. As a matter of fact, I'm realizing right now that I should have done the skin. Yep, I should have done the skin. Okay. So let me undo that really fast. There we go. Okay, so skin is underneath, then the hair is on top, then the mask, then the brown part of the mask, or the light part of the mask, then the brown part of the mask, then the claws, and then the facial features. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. So to make sure I don't have to outline all of this area twice, I do the underlying part, which is the skin. So that's where I'm supposed to start. And anything over the top of it doesn't matter because we're going to cut through it when we come through that way anyways. So anyways, let's do it. And for now, since the skin is under the hair, I am just going to uh, make it all one piece. And of course, I just realized what I did wrong. Oh, geez. Okay. Cut out everything I don't need first, right? See, this is the kind of stuff that is killing me on my time. There we go. We know we don't need this claw. Whoops, went through there. There we go. We know we don't need this mask. Whoop, keep the hair though. There we go. Add that little piece of hair right there back. Now that's better. And we know we don't need any of this. Because I'm going to be getting rid of that anyways. There we go. Now it can come through and just isolate it to the hair. And the skin. Like what I was doing. See, that's what I'm talking about. I need to get that method down better. Okay, and we don't need this blade showing through so we're going to cut all of that off right there there we go see and you can see what I'm cutting away I'm leaving this selected and all of the skin and hair selected now that's what I was going after right there that's what I mean about having to redo certain portions all the time it's it's pretty exhausting but you know what it is the learning curve and I've been flatting a lot of my book but you know what I still do that and man it just I don't know it really eats into your time sometimes because you can be pretty far and you're like yes and then no because you did it wrong or you waste time and you double outline a whole bunch of stuff you don't need to double outline
Okay. Oops, I got rid of this part. I should probably keep that connected just in case. None of this part will probably show through very well, but it's easier for the selection later. Okay, so now I just need to chop out the blades, which I know I'm probably gonna end up redoing this part twice, but you know what, whatever. I don't really see right now how to avoid that, but it's probably gonna show up later on. Okay, I'm trying to work pretty quickly here because I need to get this thing finished. How many minutes? I'm at 15 minutes right now. I'm realizing now that with as much as I'm having to cut away I could have just went in and selected everything I actually needed to select the right area yes okay so now I need to find the right skin tone for that a little dingy there what the heck hmm It's looking a little better. Okay, now let's chop off all the parts that aren't the hair.
Actually, I shouldn't even bother dividing that. Keep them selected. Add two. Just so I can run the colors through. There we go. Okay, now that I have the hair, let's make it sort of a bluish, dark blue. Actually, you know what? Forget that. Let's make it a bluish gray. Selection of hair, selection of skin, and all of the other stuff. See, and you can see the areas now when I turn off the main piece. I'm still going to have to go in and clean this up, it looks like. Okay, then some of these pieces I actually want to stay how they are for the most part. Okay, so I want to get rid of all of these other parts. that tannish color that's actually underneath. I'm deleting that part. Whoops. Redo. Deleting that part right there so that that can show through. Otherwise it looks like that. And I don't want that brown same matching the same brown down here. I want it to be tan.
I am still going to have to give it that color though. So I will do on that right there. Thank you. Nah, a little too dark. Try that one. Mm, too close to the skin. Take a sample from up here. Try that. That's better. <coughs> okay, so now we have that's what our selection looks like. So I can still grab this area if I need to. Next is the, let me see here, claws. I need to grab all of this other area, which gives us, yes, all the tan area. I could do the eyes right now, but I'm going to deal with the eyes and the mouth after I deal with the skin. So I'll isolate the claws now. So, whoops. Grab my lasso tool and start cutting away the parts that aren't the claws. See, this is where it's easy because easier because uh, see, I've already selected all the sharp points out here of the claws and everything else. So now I just cut away these inside parts that I don't need, and then that means I have to lasso less. 